Ladies, gentlemen, and Haradrim of all ages, as we get closer to the end of the year, we enter a season of giving, and in tune with this season, Diablo 4 is in a giving mood itself, at least as far as news goes. There's been quite a bit going on, even in just the last couple of days. Today we've got a new hotfix to talk about, along with some quality of life buffs to Abattoir of Zero pushing. We have the first confirmed completed tier 25 of the Abattoir of Zero activity, which feels crazy to actually say at this moment, and then we also have a recently discovered bug that was genuinely make players murder themselves and causing a lot of confusion that is now starting to actually clear up. So let's dive into it all, starting off with the official news in the form of the hotfix that hit a couple of nights ago. This in itself was not massive, at least not what it said that it was changing, which was all bugs. Mostly just fixing the buff from Midwinter Wards as part of the Midwinter Blight event to last for the intended 60 minutes instead of only 6 minutes, as that is just, you know, obviously much more irritating to keep active than 60 minutes would be. Then also fixing a bug where if in a group one of your players leaves the avatar of Zir, just before the Bloodseekers spawn in, they would sometimes just not spawn at all, which would just destroy your run, destroy your sigil, and that would suck. Niche interaction, definitely not something you would have done purposefully in any way, but now it is fixed, which is definitely a good thing. Then of course we have stability and performance improvements. By itself, when this hotfix was released, it was just sort of like, um, okay, I guess, small patch, mini hotfix, not a big deal, continue as normal. But then as people continued playing the game throughout the night, they realized something was a little bit off, a little bit different. And then of course, Adam Fletcher, the global community development director for Diablo 4 made a post about how there was maybe another aspect of this hotfix that they didn't actually tell us at all beforehand. The reason for that is unknown, but they are at least being extremely candid about it here, and the change is significantly reducing the sigil powder cost of crafting Bloodford sigils, as well as significantly reducing the sigil powder reward from completing an abattoir tier successfully. The idea behind this is essentially to lower the barrier to entry a notable amount. Here we see the actual numbers themselves for every single tier from 1 to 25, what they used to cost, what they now cost, what they used to drop, and what they now drop, and the main thing that you will notice is that the cost has reduced an absolutely insane amount that makes it actually approachable for people who didn't farm up sigil powder for weeks beforehand, and the second thing though is that the powder reward has also dropped nearly equally, not quite as equally because it's an important thing to say because it's still actually quite a bit more favorable than before, even so. Essentially before this hotfix, an abattoir tier would drop around one and a half times as much sigil powder as it costs to craft that specific tier which is decent, but it's worth noting that the difference between the cost of tier 1 and tier 25 was absolutely massive, and so you couldn't really farm the sigil powder from a tier 1 to do a tier 25, it just wouldn't really work, especially because if you were pushing the actual limits that you could do, it would obviously lead to very quick droughts, as you would be spending a lot more than you'd be making, and all you really had to do is fail a couple of times in a row to start hemorrhaging sigil powder extremely quickly. Now, if you follow through with this though, and the new stuff, the new cost is lowered a stupendous amount, with tier 1 being 150 cost, tier 25 being only 270, and the rewards being rescaled to be a somewhat random amount between a specific set, and the average amount dropped goes up a decent amount as a result. The ratio itself does fluctuate a little bit as you move through the tiers, but now the new values give you almost twice as much upon finishing the Abattoir of Zir as the cost for that tier's sigil. For example, tier 1, it is 150 cost to create, an average of 300 dropped at the end, and remember that it's only 270 to make a tier 25 now, so getting 300 on average for doing tier 1 means 1 tier 1 completion equals 1 tier 25 sigil craftable if you're at that point, and it's exactly double the cost of a tier 1 sigil, which is worth noting too. For tier 1, it is 200 to craft, 380 on average drop, so a little bit worse than double, but still far better than it used to be for sure. This is a very all-encompassing and very much it's a fix to something that we did complain about as players. In fact, as of this point, I would argue that the developers have fixed about 90% of our complaints about Avatar of Zir, at least the actual major ones. They made the Glyph Experience reward actually meaningfully scale properly so we can interact well with the Pierce of Blood Glyph. They removed Vampiric and Suppressor Affixes from Bloodseeker so RNG couldn't just totally fuck a run over at the end of it. They rescaled the earlier tiers of the Abattoir to be easier so that the activity was more accessible to more players, but without overly affecting the higher tiers of the activity so that there was still a challenge to try and overcome for the really high-end players pushing that as far as they could go. Then now they've fixed the issue of Sigil Powder investment as well to even get into the Abattoir in the first place, as well as easing up the cost to reward ratio so you don't have to farm quite as much relative to before if you just want to straight up push the highest tiers that you can over and over again even if it means you die pretty frequently if that's your type of thing. On that note because this was done in a hotfix this was a server side change and developers have noted in the past that when they do that on anything that has a tooltip the change will be numerically correct in the game it will be reflected when you interact with the system properly but the tooltip itself will not reflect it accurately until the next client patch so it will claim that the cost to craft a blood forward sigil is the same as it was before but 
but you can look at your own sigil powder while you're crafting one and watch it go down the new updated amount as they've stated here. Rather than crazy high old amount, so that's just a much better. Then they also just say, hey, thanks for the feedback. They will keep working on implementing it, and that is an important thing to actually remember here. The Avatar of Zero as a whole was sold to us as an experiment, really, a testing ground for future ultra endgame activities. The launch was a bit rough for it, for sure, no doubt about that, but they quickly and effectively have fixed a hell of a lot of the issues that we had with it. It isn't perfect by any means, sure, but it is more than serviceable at what it was originally intended to do, pushing players to their absolute limits. Then we have a second hotfix, this one hitting just last night and not affecting the Avatar at all, simply increasing the material gains from Midwinter Blight so you can get your holiday rewards a little bit faster and smoother. The amount seems to be up a decent bit, which is nice for sure, but given that this doesn't really affect player power, the actual precise balancing of the event and the actual material drop rate has a lot more room to play with for the developers to do, and I appreciate that they are still making it more generous to us even so. On which note, we have another big story today, which is one player who officially became the first person to crush those so-called limits on the Avatar of Zir. This is a video on Billy Billy in which a barbarian player using the updated current spinning hammer of the Ancients build, something that takes advantage of animation canceling, unique interactions with channeling skills and attack speed, bleed applications, and just fishing for procs will absolutely immortal, a really cool build for sure, and of course this also does involve snapshotting, which we had a video about recently if you want to know more about as a whole, but essentially it's the idea of getting your ring legendary aspect to work as if it was a two-handed legendary aspect as an example, meaning it gets double effectiveness for free. That part of it is absolutely a bug, but it is a bug that is definitely a part of the game, and it is something that players have been using to actually push into the higher tiers of Avatar of Zero up to this point. The developers themselves said that tier 25 was never intended to be completed by players for the entire season, but here we are, right now, watching the final moments of it happening right in front of you just over a week after the release of the activity itself. Well, how did we get here so fast? Well, the developers made the activity hurt a little bit less, they made it a bit easier, they also made it far quicker to upgrade your Tears of Blood Glyph, which is very important. What that meant was that it was essentially only a matter of time, really, as Barbarians had worked out a build that made them immortal for all intents and purposes, involving Selig and stacking resource generation with the inbuilt class mechanics of gaining fury when they get hit by enemies, and as a result, you could turn incoming damage into positive fury gain, so you would never actually lose health, thus making yourself essentially immortal. What this means is that if the build could get enough damage as well to beat the timer, it was a guarantee that someone would be able to beat tier 25, no doubt about it. And, well, through a mix of tiers of blood levels, which give you scaling damage increases, then also snapshotting to make a couple of legendary effects work at double potency, this was completed much sooner than I actually expected. You may be complaining about the whole snapshotting thing and how that's a part of it, and, well, the thing is, it was part of this race, and there's a decent chance tier 25 was actually never going to be achievable without it, because the damage actually required to hit the timer in tier 25 is just absolutely insane. And so everyone who hadn't given up on trying this found a new way, and that way was snapshotting. The thing is, this also brings it to the developer's attention in a very notable way, and I absolutely expect snapshotting to be at the top of their priority list as far as fixing things for the start of season three, for sure. Then we have one last thing to talk about that was discovered this week specifically to do with a vampiric power, and as it turns out, this power was actually a full-on weighted clothing debuff that was making us accidentally unalive ourselves. The power of note here is domination, increased damage to stunned, immobilized, and frozen enemies, and also guaranteed executes against injured enemies hit by those crowd control effects. The fun part here is apparently the second line of that, the one where it says that this will instantly kill injured non-elites. Well, apparently that includes us, the player, who are in fact not elites. And if you are under 35% health, you count as injured. So let's say you're running something like we were just talking about, an immortal barbarian build that thrives on being low health, actually becoming stronger while at low health realistically. You have that vampiric power on, you surround yourself with enemies, and you can actively just watch your fury actually go directly up instead of ever going down, never actually dropping even to the big hits unless you get stunned, which you just get insta-killed by. As it turns out, that's not a consequence of it being a big hit that just happens to be a stun and go through all of your fury and health in one go. It's actually a bugged interaction with this vampiric power that will instantly kill you as the player if you are hit by one of those types of crowd control effects while at 30 5% life or below. Go figure. Apparently, we count as an enemy as far as this power is concerned. Hopefully the devs see this one, but given how late we are in the season, I would definitely be surprised if this actually does get fixed while the power is still relevant. More just a funny thing to point out, and definitely something to make people aware of for anyone who is actively trying to push tears in Avatar of Zir, as this could absolutely be something that is stopping you dead in your tracks without you even being aware it was a detriment to you in the first place. That's it for today, everyone. All the news from the game from the last couple
couple of days, essentially just boiling down to a hotfix as well as the unannounced features of that hotfix, changing our sigil powder economy, the finish line crossing for the first player to complete tier 25 Avatar of Zir, and then finally just an interesting, definitely fatal bug with the domination vampiric power. I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown, and of course, I'll be back with you as soon as there's more news to share. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye